Hey everyone, Sean from Rainier Arms here. Today we want to cover a little how to install the DPM. This is a solid recoil system uh, from DPM and it's their multiple spring recoil reduction system. It's a triple, uh, triple spring setup and it's, it's pretty solid. So uh, we did a previous video um, kind of shooting with it and comparing it and it wasn't like a versus who's is better type of thing. It was just a general like I want to feel, is there a difference between the the DOS and tool list that comes in the Staccato P um, versus like just to set up with the, the DPM. And from that video and from that testing, we compared uh, just a brand new Sprinco spring that I put into my Staccato P on the DOS and tool list precision recoil system uh, or the DOS and precision tool list recoil system. And then we just did a handful of different shooting sequences just to see kind of what the differences uh, were. And um, I did find a setup that I really, really liked with this DPM. So I had previously left it in my gun and I plan on using it a lot more for some PCSLs and UPSA matches just to, just to get some more data on it. Um, but anyways, to the point here, uh, I wanted to just do a quick video showing you how easy it is to install and set up your DPM system uh, in the Staccato P. Keep in mind that it is gonna be different dependent on uh, if you're utilizing less striker fire, like a, a Glock SIG, CZ, uh, Smith & Wesson, whatever it might be striker fire wise. This is just how to do it for the 1911 style with the Staccato P. Um, and it's very similar for the other ones as well. So to kind of get into that, first things that we're gonna do is just look at what comes in this package here. The cool thing about this pack is it will ship to you with three different recoil springs. You'll have kind of a short, a medium, and a little bit longer recoil spring. We'll set them up right here, just like that. Uh, with it, you're going to have a tool. This tool here helps kind of compress everything down. You've got your your, rod, your recoil rod, and there's the tool right there that is required that you'll need in order to take this system out or put it into your gun, okay? With that, in here in this little pack, two other pieces that are needed. So that's gonna go onto your recoil guide rod. And then this little spacer here is uh, used, it's optional if you want to use it, uh, you can put it in the setup with your spring in order to just get a little bit more compression from that spring, which means that you're getting six different options, six different variances to set up your recoil system here, okay? So in here is also gonna be your instructions. If you like having the pictures and the how-tos and if you forget how, uh, just opens up, gives you all the instructions that you need as well as a parts list, having your installation tube, your compressive disc, your recoil rod, uh, external springs, your spring plug, and your rings, okay? So yeah, you'll see all that when you get it. So how we're gonna set this up today is um, I'm just gonna use a setup that I found that I really liked during my shooting sequences um, on the testing the other day, which was this longer spring right here. So we're gonna use that one to set up. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna have to do is disassemble my Staccato P. What you're just going to do, your real standard, obviously make sure it's all clear, align everything up, pull that takedown pin out. So now we have our slide. With that, since this is the Dawson Precision Toolless Recoil System, I'm going to push this all the way forward, push down on this lever, and that ends up catching and trapping that whole recoil rod assembly. Now I can pull that out. Okay, so super simple. And that's one thing that I really love about the Dawson Toolless Recoil System is that it is toolless. It takes, it takes nothing and hardly any effort to pull that sucker out. So I do like that, I appreciate that. Um, we'll go ahead and just leave the barrel and everything in that slide assembly. There's no need to, to take that out, okay? All right, so first thing we're gonna do, we have our recoil rod. What we're gonna need is our spring plug as well as our compressive disc, okay? What we do is we take this spring plug, insert it into the disc, just like that, where you can see on that, that plug, 
how there's a fat end and then a skinny end. This compressive disc will only slide on one way, so it makes it pretty easy. Now, what I'm gonna do, I have that prepped, I'm gonna take my spring. Now there's a little important detail here. On this spring, you can see that there is an open end to the spring and that there is a closed end to the spring. Okay, it's pretty important to make sure that that closed end is going onto and seating onto your recoil rod, your guide rod. Okay, so once I have that closed in there, I kind of just set it up against the table. I'm gonna go ahead and take my compressive disc with my spring plug, it goes right over the spring, and all you're gonna do is simply push that down all the way as far as it'll go, hold it there. Now you're gonna take your tool. Inside of here, you'll see, if you can, you'll see a screw. That screw essentially screws right onto the end and you're gonna screw that in all the way nice and tight. And now it's important to see, right here there's just that small amount of gap, you can't see any thread. This has to be screwed in all the way. So if I compress this just a little bit so that I can unscrew this some, and now you can kind of see a little bit of thread in there, uh, we don't want that. We gotta make sure that this is tight, screwed down, just snug, you don't have to like Hulk smash it all the way down, but we want it to be nice and tight, okay? So at that point, your compressive disc comes out and now you have a recoil assembly ready to be installed. So what I do wanna do is just show you at what point you put in that washer if you want to, okay? So just to reverse, I'm gonna put that compressive disc on. I'm gonna compress it down. I'm going to unscrew. I'm gonna slowly let this come up so the spring doesn't go shooting off at me. And right here is where I would put, if I wanted to use this spacer to get just a little bit more compression for my spring, it's pretty simple. I just drop it right into there. And then I would go through the same exact process of tightening it down. So compressing all the way down, screwing on my tool. And then boom, I'd be right at that step. Okay. For my setup, how I like to run it, I didn't like it as much with that spacer. So again, I'm going to take that out real quick. I just wanted to kind of show you at what point that goes in and we'll redo this. So pretty simple to do. And we'll put that off to the side. All right. So now installing your recoil rod. So as you can see, we have a little curvature cut in, in the, into the back part. That is going to be going down against your barrel. And all we're going to do is slide that into place. Make sure it's aligned right, just like that. So final result there is nice and flush. From here, what you'll have to do is push your recoil assembly forward so that you can relieve the pressure on it and unscrew this tool. So that comes back off. Now this can be a little bit tricky. You just have to slowly and controllably release that spring system back and it'll be sitting there now utilizing all of the spring tension right there. Now it's very important to understand that if, if I start jostling or pushing this, if I push it up this way, that spring and everything will shoot out. So we want to try to avoid that. It's a good rule of thumb to make sure that that is facing away from eyes and mouth and face and teeth and all that stuff. Make sure it's facing in a safe direction so that if it does, for whatever reason, spring up and spring out, you're not, you're not damaging your vision or anything crazy like that, okay? So then at that point, it's ready to go. We're just going to reassemble that staccato the same way. Make sure that key's up. I'm going to go ahead and switch this around. Align everything. Get that aligned. If it wants to cooperate, there we go. From there, I'll just do my standard function testing. And I've got fully functional firearm. So it's, it's, quite, it's quite instantaneous to be able to feel that difference based on this setup, how that spring feels. It really is just, it's nice. It's a nice setup. The benefits here are, are a couple things. So... 
Yes, this, this Dawson Toolless or Dawson Precision Toolless recoil system is solid. It's awesome. It works great. It's also easy enough for me to purchase other springs, uh, different Sprinco springs, put them in here and switch it out. And I can adjust how that recoil is felt based on what grain ammunition I'm shooting and how much powder, all those different, those different aspects, right? Yeah, that can be done. So you might be asking, why would I replace this with this system? Well, the, the DPM does offer an easy way to adjust having the three different springs that can go on very easily with that spacer. But the benefit also could be simply that maybe this gun for me, this is the gun that I carry daily. Maybe I don't want to have the same setup for my duty carry as I do for maybe competition because of the different ammunition I'm shooting my, you know, self-defense rounds versus my competition rounds. If I have two different setups that I can easily switch out in a matter of literally just like a minute, it makes it a whole lot easier for me to be able to have this gun in a multiple role and still have it set up in ways that I want for each role that it is. Duty, I can have it set up one way, be able to handle a lot spicier, different loads, you know, being my FMJs, um, or sorry, being my hollow points, or I can have it more in that competition setup where I'm utilizing my FMJs, you know, shooting a little bit softer and all that kind of stuff. So there is a benefit to having both. They also, you know, again, it's, it's very modulated. It's a very, it's very easy to adjust and find exactly what you want. A couple minutes at the range and you can figure out the system that you want with this DPM. So that there is just a little bit on it, quick, easy way to get it into your gun, super easy to install and easy to take out and switch. So boom, that's it. I do want to show real quick, just if, uh, if you do need to take it out, it's going to be about the same, just reverse from what we did. So removing that DPM, all I'm going to do is my standard breakdown. I'm going to take out my pin. Slide comes off. I like to trap it with my thumb just because like that, it does like to sometimes spring up a little bit and then make sure it's pointed in a safe direction. Now all I'm going to do is use my thumb to push this forward, utilize my tool, screw that on there nice and tight, and now it can come out. So if I wanted to, I could switch back to my Dawson Toolis. Go right back to town with that setup, or I can swap it back out. Very easily. The only big downfall, not even a big downfall, but the only downfall to the DPM is this, that you have to have that tool with you. It'd be a little tricky to reset this up without having that tool handy. Um, I haven't figured out a method yet because I haven't tried, but that would just be a consideration is you'd need to make sure that you have that tool with you in your range bag so that you're able to switch it, switch it back and forth. Yep. Now everything doesn't want to line up for me. There we go. There we go.